I am in the middle of nowhere. What's up YouTube? Stonewall here. Today I headed out from Grants, New Mexico on my second leg of the Great Divide mountain bike route. Um, it's actually route section 5 according to the maps. Most people go from Banff down to Mexico so the numbers are backwards. So the last section I just did was 6, this next section will be 5, etc. But it'll be the second section for me. This morning had a pretty steep climb up into the mountains. Um, then a good descent and then after that there was pretty much nothing and this next couple days from Grants to Cuba are one of the most remote sections of the whole trail it's about 115 miles or so kind of just opens up it's wide open the trail does a lot of curving and then up and down you drop into these arroyos where the water washes through and you have to climb back up out of them just a lot of twisting and turning and yeah it was kind of mentally exhausting it wasn't too physically exhausting it wasn't even that hot it was only in the 80s and i had a slight tailwind some of the time but just there's just no shade out here at all uh, you can see i finally got to a few trees at the end of this section but there's just no shade and there's just nothing out here it's probably the most remote place i've been like, I haven't seen anyone, any cars, anything. I'm pretty sure I'm the only one out here within tens of miles, if not more. <laughs> but almost through this section, should uh, get to Cuba, and I'm looking forward to getting a good lunch there at a restaurant. As you can see there is not much out here except for some cows over here and I'm gonna fill up some water from the water troughs they got here I should have enough water to go this whole stretch but dry areas like this they really recommend to fill up whenever you can just in case so I'm gonna fill up the couple bottles that I've already drank today but I will show you what the water looks like and you'll see why it's important to carry a filter. So it's actually pretty cold, which is nice. What's up y'all? So as you can tell, I am no longer in that desert wasteland that I was in for the past couple days. I made it up to higher elevation, lots of pine trees up here. It's actually kind of cold, hence the jacket. Uh, first time I've had to use it so far. This morning I thought I th was going to be a decently easy ride into Cuba. It was about 45 miles. Um, but I think I was just pretty worn out from the day before still. One thing that was really annoying was that there's about five miles of just super sandy trail. Um, I had to get off and just walk my bike through the deep sand numerous times. And then when I wasn't walking and I was able to ride through it, it was still just really tiring to cycle through sand. Um, but eventually I got out of that area. It's rained on me a little bit on the paved section into Cuba, but I made it into Cuba and ate a big Mexican lunch, which was awesome. Filled me up really good. And then since it was kind of a short ride into Cuba, I wanted to go ahead and do another 10 miles or so just to make the next day smaller, trying to get to the next town tomorrow. Um, went all right, but there was a pretty big climb out of Cuba and with my full belly and tired legs, it was a, it was a tough climb, but finally made it to where I'm camping tonight. Uh, it was starting to rain and getting cold, so 
made sure to pitch up my tent real fast. And now I'm looking forward to a good night's sleep. So today turned out to be quite the adventure. First thing, st starting off this morning, my cycling computer wouldn't work. I took the batteries out and everything and it just would not work. So I don't know what's wrong with it. I might try some new batteries or I might have to get a new one. It is 11 years old, I guess. In the morning and then throughout most of the day, it was raining on me. Kind of that like light mountain rain. Then there was a pretty big section of mud. Not s the mud wasn't so bad that you couldn't ride, but it caked onto my tires pretty good. I made the uphills pretty hard. Uh, mud was flying everywhere. So first experience with that on this trip. And then there were some really rocky sections, including some steep uphills that I had to walk up. Yeah, I'm gonna have to walk up this section. Just, it was crazy rocky. My, the gears on my bike did not go down low enough for me to go up that. Uh, I'm not sure if I had the expertise to, even if I did have the gears. So it was a pretty hard day. I was looking forward to the top of the climb. It looked like, according to the maps, that I was gonna have about 27 miles of descent after the day, at the end of the day. But to my surprise, when I turned onto that road, it was turned out to be probably the worst descent I've ever had. There was a long section of just super rocky area that I had to walk a lot through. Uh, and then it turned into this area where it was all these like big rocks and then kind of washed out areas in between it to make all these uh, crevices and stuff. It's just really hard. I had to end up walking a lot. Maybe if I had a full suspension bike or something, I could have gotten through it a little easier, but it was pretty tiring. Like I said, probably the worst descent I've ever had. Uh, thankfully, finally, the last 10 miles or so was a proper descent and was able to go pretty fast and get into town here. Uh, tonight, I'm staying in this little adobe hut, cyclist lodging that was listed on the maps. Called them up and they had a spot. And yeah, I just wanted to be able to shower and get clean and kind of get inside tonight after a hard few days. What's up guys? Coming out of Abiquiu this morning. Having a pretty good morning. I rolled out my legs last night and this morning I took advantage of their hot tub so my legs are feeling a lot better today uh, the Aleve probably helps too but feeling a lot better after that hard day yesterday uh, hopefully it didn't sound like I was complaining too much yesterday I'm definitely thankful I wasn't going up that uh, long descent I had because I would have been walking a lot I don't know how those guys make it up that uh, got some clouds today I looked at the forecast, it said 0% chance of rain, so hopefully these are just keep the sun off my back clouds and not get the roads wet clouds because I got a stretch, another stretch coming up here today where if it rains the roads just become impassable again. I heard from uh, some cyclists coming the other way yesterday that last couple days that section road was pretty bad because it got some rain. So I'm hoping it doesn't rain today and that it had dried out a little and it'll be passable today. Otherwise, I might be walking a little bit. All right, guys, made it to the end of another day. Put in about 65 miles today. Wanted to go to 71 was my plan. That put me halfway to the next town, but my legs just are spent. I didn't have six more miles in me, so I'll see if I can catch them on to tomorrow if not then I'll just camp outside of town no biggie um, but yeah my legs are tired after the big climb uh, biggest climb yet hit 10,200 feet which is the tallest point I've been 
so far. Started about 6,000 this morning, so quite a big elevation change. Uh, some more climbs coming up in the next few days. I think two days from now, I'll hit the tallest point on the trail. Might not have made it as far as I wanted to today, but pretty good campsite view tonight. Something else new, snow on the trail. So I'll give you a look at what I'm having to walk down here. It is just crazy rocky. Welcome to Colorado. Whew. Feels good to say that and be done with New Mexico. New Mexico sure didn't let up the fight though. It made me work every last mile of it. Today's been ups and downs, tons of rocky sections. I've had to walk my bike going up, going down, going flat. It's uh, even had some snow up at the top, over 10,000 feet. Uh, not too much, but I had to trudge my bike over that. Uh, it's been a day, but should be easier from here on out, I think, because supposedly Colorado's pretty flat, right? <laughs> 